This is brought to you by the Alumni Association of PISJS. Hey guys, we're back again from the point we left the chapter of units earlier. We talked about some of the unit formations, uh, just giving you a review of unit formations. And what we discussed was if we have a formula, for example, we I don't know the quantity here, what this is. For example, this is some quantity with a symbol P. All I know is the formula goes like this, H, D, and G. I don't know what this stands for, but I know the units of each one of them. So I can make out the unit of this guy here. How? For example, this edge stands for height. This D stands for density. And this G stands for gravitational acceleration. Now, the unit of height is meters times, because H is multiplying with D, the unit of density is, as we know, density here, I'm writing density is mass over volume. So the unit of mass, it's the same technique again, unit of mass is kilograms. Unit of volume is meter cube in SI units. So this would be, since it's multiplying, the unit of density becomes kilogram per meter cube. So here I would multiply kilogram with meter cube, sorry, kilogram per meter cube multiplied by meters and the unit of acceleration which is meters per second square. Now all of this multiplied together, we'll just cross some m's here and there. So this becomes 2m. And this is 3m so we are left with 1m here so this becomes kilogram meter second square this is the unit of this little guy here obviously this gets converted when you will see further to pascals but that that is a different story even if you write this it will be marked as correct because this is logical this is just a name given to this and this is how units are formed. Moving on to some of the unit conversions. Now these may sound or seem very basic but this is one of the very essential part of physics that we, that each of us would need to know about. Anyway, so <clears throat> whenever we are talking about units, we have some prefixes that we need to talk about. Now, what do I mean by prefixes? Let me give you an example of a simple unit, which is grams. Now, this is a unit, an individual unit without anything attached to this. But there can be a lot of prefixes attached to this. For example, kilogram, you've heard of kilogram. There is milligram, you've heard of it. There is microgram. And there is megagram. Now, these are some of the more uncommon ones that you haven't heard about, yes. But they still exist. Doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Megagram is what you call formally as ton and microgram is another unit. Okay, so these are some of the prefixes attached to a unit and there are still more of them. For example, let's take another more common unit, meters. Let's talk about
the prefix is attached to this one and these ones will be very common for example kilometer centimeter milli meter uh, micrometer nanometer and megameter you might not have heard about this one but it still exists it's <clears throat> the point is that we can attach these prefixes to express some of the more higher powers of meter or some of the more lower powers of meters so this is an option for us as well let's take one more of this let's say time just second now you might you might not have heard about kilosecond but you have heard about millisecond and microsecond and nanosecond and mm, what are the other ones uh, micro nano milli and uh, that's it that's that's the these are the common ones but doesn't mean that this does not exist for second they do exist but since we are not very <clears throat> familiar with all of these in our daily lives or we do not use them so we just tend to think that they do not exist but actually they do one more very important one that you all have seen let me just clear the page here and I will let you know this would, this would be our last example for example byte this is the one unit and we would not Sadly, we would not talk about this in our entire physics chapter, but as an entire entire physics course, but you've heard about kilobyte, you've heard about megabyte, you've heard about terabyte, you have heard about uh, gigabyte. Now these are all, again, prefixes. So prefixes are playing a role in expressing some of the units more easily so that is why we tend to stick to the prefixes and it becomes easier okay. there is another method of the standard forms which we will talk about when we are uh, discussing some of the mathematics base, uh, basics and stuff but <clears throat> right now we'll stick to the prefixes so we will talk about some of the prefixes here let's see some the prefixes that we will come across for example let's let's make three columns here very useful columns yes here we will write the prefix here the symbol used and the value or what it means Well, starting off with the biggest one that we usually come across obviously there is no limit to the bigger one but let's just stick to our course and let's talk about one of the bigger ones mega now mega is one of the bigger units that you will come across and the symbol is a capital M a capital M be sure it's sort of small m because that means something else so it's a capital M now what it means what it means is 1 into 10 to the power of 6 now I'm sorry that the chalk is acting up let me just change the color here this will help okay. this is a 6 anyway so this is what it means we'll see how we'll use this information but for now this is what it means the next one in line is kilo the symbol for kilo is a small k and this means 1 into 10 to the power of 3 
I will show you how we use this. Next in line is uh, centi, as in centimeter. So the unit, the symbol for centi is a small c here, and the value is one into ten to the power minus two. I am hoping, I'm assuming you would know standard forms by now. But if you do not, then I will be posting up a lecture on standard forms as well so you can revise that before you come here <coughs> uh, then let's go to milli milli is a small m and this means 1 into 10 to the power minus 3 uh, micro micro is this little guy this is called a mu and this is the symbol of micro and the value of micro is 1 into 10 to the power minus 6 next in line would be nano but you wouldn't go there in your syllabus so nano is a small n and the value is 1 into 10 to the power minus 9 now what this means is let me make it clear for the ones who are just beginners at standard form. 1 into 10 to the power 6 means 1 plus 6 zeros. These are 6 zeros. I, yes, these are 6 zeros. This is what? This is 1 million. 1 into 10 to the power 3 means 1 and 3 zeros. So, here you go. For centi, since it's a minus 2, so take the decimals two places before one so here we go one this becomes zero if, I, if the decimal comes here for example so this becomes 0 0.1 and it will move one more position so this is 0 0.01 now this is three places before one this is one 0 0.1 0 0.01 and 0 0.001 this is six places before one from here one zero point one then zero point two zero point zero zero one then zero point double zero one then zero point triple zero one then four zeros and one and five zeros and one so zero point zero 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 and one and so on you will you can do this try this one yourself for the standard forms and you will know how we are functioning with the standard forms. By the way, this will have eight zeros before one. So you can see that for yourself. Anyway, so these are the common prefixes. Note them down and we'll move on to their practical applications. Practical applications of these ignored guys. Now let's see, gram is a unit of mass. What does a kilogram mean? A kilogram means this is the prefix attached and this is the unit. The prefix, mean, prefix means thousand or 10 to the power three. So what we simply write is 1 kilogram equals 10 to the power 3 grams or 1000 grams. Now if I tell you what is, uh, if I ask you actually what is centigram, you know the prefix of centi, centi is 10 to the power minus 2. So you would say 1 centigram equals 10 to the power minus 2 grams which means as in 1 into 10 to the power minus 2 gram here also 1 into 10 to the power so this means 0 0.01 grams 1 centigram equals 0 0.01 gram which means centigram is a smaller unit than as in than, than a gram so anything with a centigram would be smaller than anything with a gram now let's see 
we have a milligram. Milligram is 1 into 10 to the power minus 3 of a gram, which means 0 0.001 grams. We have, for example, a microgram. A microgram would be 1 into 10 to the power minus 6 of a gram, which means 0 0.000001 grams. All of these are smaller units. But what all that we're doing here is just we're, we're just substituting the value of the prefix here and putting this as it is. And we get the value of the centigram or the milligram or the microgram. It is that simple. Once you know the, the value of the prefixes, you can just sum, simply substitute it and you will get the value. Now, let's change the color of the chalk because the pink is annoying. Anyway, so let's move on to some more common units. For example, let's talk about seconds. A millisecond. would mean 1 into 10 to the power minus 3 of a second. So it is that simple. A microsecond would mean 1 into 10 to the power minus 6 of a second. As in this would be 0 0.000001 seconds. A microsecond is equal to this 0 0.000001 seconds which makes this one a smaller unit and this one a bigger unit so this is one more example for seconds now let's take one more unit and this would be uh, meters distance let's talk about distance unit for distance is meters however there are many variants of this meter for example kilometer which we write as kilometer smaller k and m centimeter millimeter and nanometer for example and we move on with this one kilometer would be one into ten to the power three just write the value of the prefix meters here you go that is the value of the kilometer which makes it thousand meters centimeter one into ten to the power minus two the value of this of centi meter which makes it 0 0.01 meter the millimeters 1 into 10 to the power minus 3 meters which makes it 0 0.001 meters and obviously a nanometer the value of nano is 1 into 10 to the power minus 9 and this makes it 0 0.0000001 meters so this is how you use the prefixes obviously there are some thumb rules that you should know using the prefixes and for further lectures you should remember the thumb rules one kilometer is a thousand meters one meters is hundred centimeter or thousand millimeters one centimeter is ten millimeters this is for distance we can have the same kind of thumb rules for 
mass one kilogram we know it's a kilo so it would be thousand grams definitely one gram we know thousand milligrams okay I'll show you how I did this if you do not already know because earlier we were converting from milligrams to grams so it was 0 0.001 grams but now we are converting from a bigger unit to a smaller unit so obviously it becomes a thousand milligrams and uh, thousand kilograms which which is 1 into 10 to the power 6 grams you get because this was already 10 to the power 3 and this is 10 to the power 3 again which makes it 1 into 10 to the power 6 grams this is 1 megagram or more commonly known as 1 ton so these are some of the basic thumb rules that you should remember always whenever you are talking about distance or kilogram and you will come across a lot of them so as we go on I will be showing you more of the thumb rules that you should remember but for now these are the basic ones we will also be doing some of the more a little complicated calculations using the ratio method and uh, that way you will actually understand how we are how we can just uh, or how people just convert from one unit to another without even knowing the prefixes so we'll do that in the next lecture for now just revise this and if you are not very well familiar with the standard form you know it can now at least you know it can come in handy so revise the standard forms and we will be back in the next video thanks for watching